An entitled, spoiled brat freaks out, wanting a new toy on the toy aisle. But I step in and buy the last one in stock for quite a while. And I honestly could not be more satisfied, leaving the store with toy in hand, hearing that little goblin scream at the top of his lungs. Here's what happened. A few years ago, while working overseas for the military, I was doing some quick shopping at my base exchange. While standing in an aisle looking at some cleaning items, I began to hear in the distance the sound of what felt like a screaming bad or a goat hybrid that just proceeded to get louder and louder. I looked out of the aisle to possibly spot this cryptid, but just saw a screaming little boy being pushed in a shopping cart by his mom. People around them were looking annoyed as the kid was practically screeching at the top of his lungs over and over again. I want it. I want the big gun. I want the big gun. And pointing at the toy aisle a few rows down. While passing by me, I overheard the mom telling her son, not now, sweetie. Mommy has to get to the makeup counter. We'll pick it up on the way out. And honestly, this just rubbed me the wrong way. Not only was this mother okay with how her son was acting, but she was also going to reward him for it. I then got curious and decided to go to the toy aisle to see what this big gun was. I turned the corner and I immediately saw what he was talking about. And I'll give the kid credit. He has some good taste because on the shelf was the biggest Nerf gun I've ever seen in my life. This thing was literally just a straight up minigun. It's comparable to the one that the heavy weapons guy used in Team Fortress 2. After spending a few minutes admiring it and daydreaming about how I would have absolutely destroyed my friends in Nerf gun fights if I only had this monster in my arsenal, I then realized this Nerf gun was the last one on the shelf. I immediately grabbed it and then found a store employee to ask a few questions. I went up to them and I said, excuse me, can I ask a few questions about this toy real quick? The employee happily obliged and I said, is this the last one that you have? Like, is there any more in the back? The employee says, well, let me check. They then leave to go to the back of the store for a few minutes and then returns to tell me the best news possible. The employee says, okay, yeah, that one that you're holding is the last one of that toy that we have. I also checked on our computer and there also doesn't seem to be any more in stock at our closest store or the one online. So if you want to get it, you better get it now. I also don't think we're going to be getting any other shipments anytime soon. When I heard this news, I looked at the employee and smiling like the Grinch, when he got a wonderful, awful idea, I said thank you. I then immediately proceeded straight to checkout and bought this Nerf minigun. But the cherry on top was what happened after I bought my new toy. I went back into the store to make sure that the mini Banshee knew what I just bought. I found him still in the shopping cart next to the makeup counter with his mom talking to a salesperson. I casually walked by in front of the kid with a big Nerf gun under my arm and what happened next was most definitely worth the price tag. The look of shock and fear just completely took over this kid's face as he starts to scream as well as yank on his mom's sleeves and point at me. I just disappear into another aisle and proclaim that my job was now done. While leaving the store, they must have rushed back to the toy aisle because I again could hear the ear-piercing screeches of that little goblin coming from the toy aisle. He was screaming over and over again about how it's gone, crying at the top of his lungs. I usually don't like the sound of screeching children, but that might as well have been a live Aerosmith performance because that was just pure audible chocolate to me. And while leaving, I walk past the guy entering the store who could also hear this screaming kid with a very confused look on his face. He looks at me and says, good lord, what on earth is that? I look at him and I say, it's most likely a mistake, and I honestly could not be happier. This original poster is absolutely my hero. They got back at this spoiled rotten kid and basically showed that no, you cannot get what you want sometimes. It's always fun to have adult money where you can do stuff like this and maybe just get a little bit of a dig at that spoiled kid in the toy aisle. So honestly, I'm on the original poster side here. I don't think they did anything wrong in the slightest. And if anything, they can probably give that to a kid who would most likely actually appreciate it instead of that screaming spoiled child who clearly is rewarded for their bad behavior. My fiance doesn't earn enough money to help out around the house. And now, even though he's got a part-time job, he refuses to push for anything better than that. And it's honestly just so frustrating. So my fiance grew up in a relatively well-off household. He used to get money from his parents all the time. He's never really had to work very hard in his life, but now they're no longer able to support him. So instead, he's began to lean heavily on me. I am in no way career-minded. I grew up in poverty and I have no familial support. And so I guess I'm just hardworking when I have to be, but I don't enjoy it as I struggle with being 
being disabled. I'm financially comfortable, not wealthy, but I can pay my half of rent and bills. I treat us to trips and night outs, as well as gifts on special occasions. He doesn't ever do any of this for me, which so far has been okay because I thought it was a temporary situation. I don't like my job and I find it stressful, but I can't just quit. If I do, I won't be able to take care of both of us. I didn't pursue any of my career goals, which would have temporarily plunged us into poverty because we agreed supporting him in his career would work out for the best if we wanted to have a family. He was retraining for a career in tech. I was okay with this, but it did mean putting on hold making important plans for our future, like marriage, kids, or even owning our own home. Literally years out of my life, I was made to believe it was for the best for our future in the long run. He left his training early for personal reasons, which I completely understand. He's qualified enough to pursue the jobs he wanted. He took on a part-time cleaning job, which has turned out to be very cushy for him, as a lot of time, he doesn't have to do anything and has no boss breathing down his neck. It's not enough to pay his way 50-50 or ever help us out in hard times, but he promised it was temporary until he gets the job in the industry that he wants. Something he said would be working on his free time. People are getting laid off left and right here at the moment, and I have no reason to believe that this job might not last as it is anyways. He told me today he's not going to pursue any other better paid work. He says he's happy working part-time at an easy job that doesn't challenge him and then just coming home and playing computer games. I said this isn't fair on me and it's just not sustainable. When I said it's unfair and stressful for me to bear the financial burden for the both of us, he suddenly became incredibly hostile. My job could go at any time as well. We have no security like this. I'm feeling the strain and I didn't sign up for this. We are otherwise happy and harmonious in our relationship. Aside from this particular situation, I love him, but I'm losing respect for him. I'm starting to feel like his mom instead of his fiance. I'm frightened for our future now and I honestly don't know what to do. So for some better context, the guy in this situation is 42 years old. So his entire adult life, he has mooched off of his parents and used them just so he could stay afloat and basically do whatever he wants to do. And it sounds like he's doing the exact same thing with you. He's basically using you for money and he is using your job as a way to stay afloat and basically just live a lazy life instead of being more career minded and pushing for something more. And I think you have it right. This is just completely unfair for you. I would imagine if I was in your shoes, I would feel pretty burned out as well as super frustrated that this man that you want to marry is suddenly acting like such a child. I mean, you can clearly see where his priorities are. He would rather go home after a part time job that's super low stress and play video games than get out there and get a higher paying job so both of you can meet any of your goals. So maybe sitting down with him and reminding him of those goals that both of you have might go a really long way. It sounds like you don't own your own home and it sounds like you really do want to make a life for yourself and maybe explain that, hey, this is not going to get us the life that we want and it's not fair to sit here and basically not be able to get exactly what you want all because he is not putting in the effort to find that job that's in his field that can pay a lot more. So hopefully this works out for you because what you're currently describing definitely sounds really frustrating and you absolutely deserve a lot better. An entitled Karen refuses to turn off her stupid music and even after we ask her nicely she turns it around on us and claims that it's her right to play music whenever she wants and however she wants. And she was honestly so unbelievably annoying. So I was on a bus today and this lady and her son sat behind me. She was playing this gospel song for children on her phone or something like that and telling her son the story of Daniel from the Bible. She kept playing the same song again and again. During the fourth or fifth time, I turned around and said these exact words. Ma'am, could you turn down the volume, please? Just turn it down a little bit, please. At this moment, the other passengers looked at me, and I'm pretty sure they were glad somebody finally said it. The woman refused and sounded very offended that I dared to ask her to turn it down. I reiterated that I was asking politely, and she repeated her reaction, still sounding offended. I swear, this lady was acting like I went to her private at home and asked her to stop listening to music. She then tried to claim that if it was profanity music, I wouldn't complain. But you know what? This lady doesn't know me. She doesn't know what I listen to. All she knows is that I asked her as kindly as I could to turn down the volume. I don't know if it was my age, my clothes, or even the color of my skin. But really, I bet this woman just assumes that if somebody complained about her kid's song, he must be into the devil's music.
music or whatever it is. I thought about playing the most unholy rap song I thought of on my phone at maximum volume, but unlike her, I actually have respect for the other passengers on the bus. She ended up saying that if it bothered me, there were some seats I could take at the front of the bus. And I said, you know what? There is. So I got up and I just left. I then heard her arguing with this guy on the back of the bus, who I think was defending me in the moment. So shout out to this guy for keeping her busy so she wouldn't play that stupid song again. She then proceeded to say that her son was autistic and also had ADHD while talking much louder than the guy she was speaking with. She referred to playing her annoying song over and over again as a personal right and once again said I wouldn't be complaining if it was profanity music even though she doesn't know me. I'm glad we didn't leave at the same stop because I'm not sure if I could resist cussing her out and I really prefer to not exchange any words with her ever again. Despite wanting to tell her, my reaction for any song repeated several times would be the same. And if I was listening to music, profanity or even Mozart wise, either way, I'd have earplugs in and I would not be bothering the people around me. But that wouldn't make a difference on her because she doesn't need arguments. She's aware she can get away with it because she honestly is just so entitled. I truly cannot stand people like this. They get on a public platform, whether it's a bus or an airplane or whatever it is, and they play their music full blast. And I'm with the original poster. I don't care what it is. Put on headphones, put in ear pods, do whatever you gotta do to make it a private experience. I am not interested in your stupid music, your podcast, or whatever it is. And the fact that this lady tried to profile the original poster and make some kind of assumption about them based on the way they look is truly disgusting. I mean, this guy could have easily just been into K-pop and had nothing to do with any kind of profanity music or whatever veiled subtle message she was trying to get across because it was clearly obvious she was trying to make some nefarious comment without getting caught in her words. So hopefully this guy never runs into this lady again because she honestly sounds obnoxious and entitled people like this clearly just will never get it. No matter how nice and polite you could possibly come across, they will always think they're in the right. I am struggling with my father's new partner and I honestly just want her to stop treating me like a child. So I have just recently moved back home with my father due to an ex that caused me to lose my job. It's not ideal and the move wrecked my savings and my job market is not here. So I'm currently job hunting and expect to be moved out within three to six months, which is pretty reasonable for the most part. Otherwise, I had not lived at home since I was 18 years old. Mind you, now I'm 22. My mother and father separated this year and my father has found an old but new flame. I've never met the woman since I moved in so recently, but he's constantly on the phone with her. So it's like she's here in spirit and it's constant. They are also planning on combining households in about a year. This is fine. And while I'm not pleased with how fast things are moving, she is fine as a person. She has one fatal flaw though. She constantly treats me like a younger teenager and it's resulted in my father also treating me younger, which is driving me up the wall. They keep making plans involving me without my input, especially her. This would be cute if it did not involve me doing things like living at home forever or even sharing a room with her daughter, as well as spending literally every holiday with them. I usually juggle between my mom's house, my father's house, or just large family get-togethers. I'm the only one willing to see my mother as my younger siblings blame her for frankly everything. And that stretches to literally almost every single bad thing. She also, in general, just doesn't want me to move out and just wants me to be a part of her nuclear family forever. She buys me things that I have zero interest in. And while it's sweet, I genuinely think it's just a waste of money. And she calls me her kid. She also expects me to be at family family dinners nightly in the future and in general seems to view me as much younger than I am with plans to live at home for much longer than I'd want or could possibly stand. This has also resulted in my father treating me like a baby when he's on calls with her and this is something that I've noticed recently. Frankly, my father was an atrocious parent mentally, physically, emotionally so him treating me like I have the emotional maturity and mental capacity of a toddler is honestly not surprising but she some somehow makes it worse. It has started feeding into each other and is giving me a headache. I've repeatedly mentioned that I feel too old for a stepmother and I don't think of her that way, but it's not computing with either of them. Likewise, the constant steamrolling of my wants as well as my needs as an adult is driving me nuts. For added measure, I suspect that I might be pregnant and I am not looking forward to that level of extra smothering. I suspect moving 
will be my only fix to this circumstance, and this might be the only way that I can reestablish boundaries. But anything else would be nice in the meantime before I beat my boundaries into them with a rolling pin. What should I do? I think you said it best. I really think moving out is going to be the only way that you can possibly have any semblance of your adulthood back. Because they see you moving back in, and they only see that 18-year-old girl that lived in your father's house. And that's really unfortunate. You've grown up over these past few years. You are a different person overall. And they really do need to start respecting that. So it's unfortunate that they are treating you this way. And it's honestly just not fair. I mean, you have your own life. You probably have your own bills to pay and your own debts that you're trying to keep up on. And to make it even worse, not only is your dad previously incredibly abusive, but there's a chance that you might be pregnant as well, which is really not a good situation to be in, considering how weird your stepmother and your dad is acting. So hopefully you can move out of there sooner than later, because I honestly don't see this ever stopping unless you do get out from underneath their home. And then maybe once you're away from them, you can try to reestablish some boundaries. Because for them to treat you like a kid is honestly just insulting, and they really should see you as an adult and someone who is trying to live their own life. Today, I messed up by completely misunderstanding what Secret Santa really was all about, and I honestly feel completely dumb. So for a bit of context, I'm working in Europe, and I was raised in an Arabic country, so Christmas and everything else that comes with it is a complete foreign concept to me. Now, my colleagues are awesome, and I'm really enjoying working with them in the company. The only downside is that when they're extremely tired, their English tends to make less and less sense. We are a small team of five, and my manager brought it up to me that she wants to do this thing where we will make a game and choose a name, then give that chosen name a gift. I remember I double-checked if I understood correctly. I said, oh, so the whole team is going to buy a gift to that person. Being this conversation took place on a late Friday afternoon, and her being so tired, she said, yeah, sure. I found the concept weird, but I thought maybe it's just like some cultural thing, so I said, yeah, sure, I'm in. We didn't really talk about it since, so today at work, they said they're going to finally play the game to find out who they're going to gift presents to. And I thought to myself, okay, this is cool. We're going to find out who's that lucky person who's getting the expensive gift. They also said Secret Santa. I thought, wow, what a creative name for a weird game. So my manager brought a paper bag and the names were inside written on small pieces of paper. She asked us one by one to take out one name each. I thought since there were five, for every name there are five pieces of paper and the name that's picked the most will be nominated as the chosen Secret Santa or whatever is actually happening here. I was rationalizing how this is going to end up with one chosen individual to get the ultimate gift. One girl said she'll go first and that she was so excited. And I was like, what? Why does it matter? It's weird, but sure. This is all my inner dialogue, by the way. I didn't say this out loud. We all picked and then it was my turn. They're hiding the papers and reading them in secret. And I'm thinking, what's with all the secrecy? I was the one before the last. I put my hand in the bag and I noticed only two papers are left. And this was another moment where I just didn't understand what was happening. I say nothing and I pick one of them out. It's Celine. She's my favorite colleague. And in my mind, I think that she definitely deserves it. My manager picks up the last one and I thought it was time to vote. I get excited and I wait for her to give us the mark. Instead, she asked us to put the papers back in the paper bag and to not forget who we picked. But I thought to myself, why not just put the papers on the table and see who got voted most? But whatever. At this point, I started to feel like I didn't understand the whole thing. We put the papers back in the bag and then I asked probably the dumbest question without realizing it. I said to everyone, so who did you guys pick? I got Celine. They all collectively looked at me and said, no, you can't say who you got for Secret Santa. Now we have to do it again. I tell them that we're choosing one to give a gift to, right? And now we're supposed to be voting on it. And after I said that, they basically all looked at me incredibly confused. And then my idiot self finally gets it. The realization hit like a truck. It all clicked. I go, wait, so the person I got in my paper is a person I'm gifting and someone else got my name so they'll gift me. After one of my coworkers said yes in the most obvious way, I said, oh, now I get it. And at that point, they all just busted up laughing. And now I feel really dumb as if I only have two brain cells left. That is honestly a really funny story. And it's also incredibly wholesome. I guess from the outside looking in, a secret Santa really would be kind of weird unless you know what's going on. This is honestly just a really cute experience. And if anything, you made that secret Santa way more memorable. So hopefully Celine enjoys whatever gift you give her because you've already made this secret Santa incredibly special. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the
the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.